what is the ultimate play in client conversion and what does knowledge and application has to do when you become an influencer it gives you the edge that separates you from the competition the gap initiative the global influencers partners program is designed to expose you to over 5 billion potential consumers across the world when you are a rising star in business and you need visibility to reach impact client conversion and cash flow optimization, positioning yourself to become a global influencer may be the ideal tool that you need in your arsenal to win in business. I encourage you to join the GIP initiative and position your business to build confidence, trust, and credibility, and cash flow optimize the fastest. With this. Now, today, I really want us to sink deep into this because this may be the game changer for your business. It may be the game changer for your life. You see, the success of every business ultimately stands on the shoulders of client conversion, client conversion. But what is the ultimate play in client conversion? There's a series of knowledge that you need to have here. And if you follow some of my previous podcasts, you would have heard me talk about client conversion optimization. You would have heard me talk about the ideal client stress test and the client conversion ladder. We are not going to spend much time going into that today. I will do some high level overview of it, but I really want us to zero in on the last two concepts, which is knowledge and application. What does knowledge and application has to do with the ultimate play in client conversion? And let me explain this. You see, very often you have a body of knowledge. And let us take, for example, that body of knowledge might represent um, how to access capital. So because you represent this body of knowledge, you understand things like capital markets. You understand how debt capital market operates. You understand how equity capital market operates. You understand how you know credit market um, operates. You understand how hard money lending markets operate. You have this body of knowledge. The possibility exists also that because you're in business and you deal with sales and marketing, you understand the ultimate play in client conversion. And having this body of knowledge is vital for any rising star in business. So whether you're a micro, small, medium, large scale businesses, the concept that we are about to go into is relevant to you. You need to have the knowledge. So now that we have explained what knowledge represents, let us attempt to explain what application really represents. Now, what I have discovered over many years is that very often we say to the student that we talk to them about application, but very often the term application has many connotations. The term application can be interpreted in different contexts. And largely because of this, when you say apply yourself, it is an abstract term to the average person. So when we speak of application, it is important to understand application in its respective context because there are different contexts. What exactly is application? Application. application is a verb. Application is an action word. And this concept can be applied in many different ways. For example, I may say, apply yourself in speaking. And to apply yourself in speaking, it means that you have to be able to articulate yourself. And I do believe it means more than just articulating yourself. You have to understand how to articulate yourself. You should understand who you're articulating yourself to. And you should also understand how to articulate yourself with a manner that it is relevant to who you're speaking to. <laughs> so one might want to say that's strategic application, but it's still application. If you're applying yourself, you want to apply yourself to achieve a desired result. And if you're going to achieve a desired result, you need to have the data. I always talk about data. So in the true essence of one applying oneself, it's not just getting up and taking action. And I think that many persons struggle with this because application, applying yourself means a whole lot of things to a whole lot of people. It is my intention here to try to break this down because today we are looking at the ultimate play in client conversion, knowledge versus application. Allow me to go deeper into the client conversion journey. So any attempt to optimize 
your client conversion experience, one of the things that I have established is that you need to have the knowledge of what you're doing. And the knowledge begins with the ideal client stress test ladder. The first tread on this ladder is what we call brand relevance. And what does this body of knowledge represent? And let me walk through this, and then we're going to associate that with application. Because if you don't apply, you waste in time. To establish brand relevance, a number of things must be established. And brand rele re relevance means that your MVO, your minimum or most viable offer is relevant to the ideal client, your minimum or most viable target market. But how do you get to that point to know 101% that the products and services that you're offering is relevant to the ideal client. <laughs> First of all, you need to do the, you need to apply the concept or at least have the body of knowledge that speaks about demographic classification. So that's knowledge. All right. Do you have demographic classification? Are you able to predetermine the demographic that you're targeting? Do you know your demographic class classification? That should be a knowledge, but having the knowledge and not being able to apply that body of knowledge is a like night and day. You're going to fail. The second concept here, knowledge that you need to have here, now that you have established, you have now predetermined the demographic classification. The second thing that you want to predetermine is what are the specific needs of my demographic classification? This is another body of knowledge that you have. Follow the data, follow the crumbs. The crumbs is going to help you to make better, smarter, wiser business decisions, better, smarter, wiser investment decisions. It's going to position you to cash flow optimize like a pro because you have the data, you follow in the crumbs to get to the bread. The third concept here, now that you have established demographic classification, second, you have established the specific needs of the demographic. Third, you are now asking yourself, are you in the position of strength to innovate products and services and deliver that products and services based on the demographic classification expectation, based on the specific needs of the ideal client? Now that you know that you can deliver based on the expectations, you want to go a step further. Can you deliver based on expectations? And can you deliver above and beyond expectations? Now, this is knowledge. And I want you to picture this. You have him and her in the classroom. And what him does, him takes this body of knowledge and he feels excited about this body of knowledge. But her also takes this body of knowledge. Her feels super excited that they understand the basic tenets of the practical steps that has to be taken in the client conversion optimization process. They feel excited, yeah, that I have this body of knowledge and they can articulate themselves effectively around it. But that's knowledge. That's knowledge. But him or her were both placed into leadership position in the marketing department of two different organizations. But him is excited and, you know, articulating himself on, on how much he knows about the client conversion process, the ultimate play in client conversion. And he's excited about that process. And he's entitled to feel that joy and happiness and excitement now that he's a walking encyclopedia on the ultimate plane client conversion. <laughs> he has this body, of, has this body of knowledge. Her, on the other hand, is excited, similarly so excited, but her begins to recognize that having the body of knowledge and not being able to apply this body of knowledge to achieve desired results is wasting time because you can only get the high reward, the measurable results, the predictable outcome with the highest degree of accuracy when you apply the body of knowledge. But what does application mean in this context? And I want to say, I have been teaching students across the world. And one of the things that we see is that they struggle with the concept of applying the body of knowledge. It is still in many cases like an abstract term. Her decides that she's going to break the code in application by engaging with the lecturers and teachers and professors and friends to really understand, yes, I have this body of knowledge. I can effect effectively articulate myself about this body of knowledge, but I'm having some difficulty applying this body of knowledge. What does application mean? For example, when we talk of demographic classification, you need to predetermine who is the demographic classification. How do I apply this body of knowledge? <laughs> to apply this body of knowledge, several things can happen. 
One, it means that you research the market and uh, you are researching the market because you want to ensure that your demographics are able to reach certain specific needs. You don't want to sell on higher purchase. You don't want to sell on the delay, delay payment plan. You want to sell on cash and carry. But for you to be able to sell on cash and carry, there's a number of demographic classification decisions that you have to make. It's important for you to understand the ideal client based on biodata markers. For example, there's things like demographic data that you need, psychographic data that you need, and geographic data that you need. So here is where her, de her decide that she's going to outsmart him by going to the ground and really decode what application means in the context of the ultimate play in client conversion. So she begins to decode it. Her begins to decode what this means. It means one, you're able to clearly identify your ideal client. So it might be the middle class, it might be the upper class, but you are clearly able to define the ideal client. And you're defining them based on a specific income bracket. You're defining them based on specific needs. You're defining the ideal client based on ability to access the ideal client. You're defining the ideal client based on the viability of the mark. You're defining the ideal client based on their ability to pay. You're defining the ideal client based on their willingness to pay. She cracked the code <laughs> or cracked the code. So many persons are going to struggle with this concept because one, you're not asking the right question. And two, even when you get the information, you're not sensitive enough enough to interpret the information. You're not receptive enough to interpret the information and spend enough time with it to ensure that you're doing a proper decoding. So imagine now that you're in this position of strength and you're identifying your demographic classification based on the biodata marker. You don't have to worry, how am I going to access them? You don't have to worry if they have the, the ideal client ha have the ability to pay. You don't have to worry if the ideal client has the willingness to pay because you understand the psychographic. You went out, you collect the information, you were market oriented, you were market sensitive, and now you're market responsive based on the information that you have. We're talking here about the ultimate play in client conversion. Many of you, you're going to struggle to convert the ideal client, to convert the potential client into exciting consumers because you have the knowledge but you're struggling in the application. So in the first instant the code is decoded. So you now understand what demographic classification is all about and why it is so important for you to identify your ideal client based on demographic classification. This is now unique because the ability to identify your ideal client, the biodata markers can change. And there are many factors that can change that because there are cases where one might be able to say, okay, I want cash and carry, but what if I'm able to get someone to sponsor a large community of people. The community may not be able to pay, but I'm able to get a sponsor. It might be a government grant. It might be a private sector investment into the value offer that you have to offer to impact people. So there are changes there. But the reality here, this has to evolve beyond just you having the knowledge and you being able to apply this body of knowledge in the context in which it ought to be applied for it to make sense in the client conversion process. Because if you don't apply this, you're going to struggle in business. And I'm saying to you that many rising stars in business fail because they have the knowledge. In many cases, yes, you might be super knowledgeable, but then you are not applying this body of knowledge. And worse Yes, the worst case scenario is that you don't have this knowledge. You don't have the mentor. You don't have the coach. You don't have the sponsors. You don't have the supportive community. And you just don't know how to apply. By default, before you say Mark said go, you have failed already. They say success leave clues. And if you follow application, you're going to find all the clues that you need to find to position your business ideas to be more successful. But the thing about it, you are not following the crumbs. That's going to take you to the brand. You are the masters of speculation. And that's one of the reasons why you're going to fail. But when you're playing the game, the ultimate play, when you're playing the game at the ultimate play level, it's a 
different mindset that you need to have. And if you don't have the mindset to do this, it makes a lot of sense to get the right mentor. It makes a lot of sense to get the right coaches. It makes a lot of sense to get the right sponsors on your side. It makes a lot of sense to build a supportive community that can really empower you to achieve the vision that you have for yourself. Leaders who went in business have a complete understanding of their clients by a data markers. And that journey begins with you understanding how to do the ideal client stress test. The ideal client stress test ladder, it's a very unique platform that really helps you to understand your ideal client at a different level. It begins by you understanding six important pillars. One is how do you create brand relevance? Two is how do you assess market viability and the brand viability? Three, how do you identify market accessibility? Next, you want to be certain that ideal client really have that ability to pay. But take it into consideration that the ability to pay does not translate into the ideal client willingness to pay. You want to go one step forward and that is to really bring yourself to that point where you know with a high degree of certainty that the ideal client has have the ability to pay. And here is where we talk about the high reward, the measure of results, the predictable outcome with the highest degree of accuracy that you need in business. Do you know how to attain this? Well, a true understanding of the ideal client stress test ladder will really position you to have and leverage this body of knowledge. And let me give, for example, as you begin to do that deep dive into the ideal client stress test ladder, one of the first threader that you will begin to unlock is is the thread we call brand relevance. How do you identify brand relevance? A number of steps must be taken. One, it is necessary for you to identify exactly who is your ideal client. And to identify the ideal client is a lot of deep dive that you have to do here. Second, you must be able to identify the specific needs of the ideal client. Now, if you don't understand or know who is the ideal client, how are you coming to this second point, and that is to identify the specific needs of the ideal client. You see, it is by understanding who is the ideal client, their specific needs, you are now in a much better position to begin innovating products and services that you can now align to the needs, wants, and expectations, their dreams, hopes, and aspirations. And this is something that we see millions of rising stars in business struggle with this. And our mission, as we develop the ideal client stress test ladder, is to provide this platform to you that can really help you to make better, smarter, wiser decision and scale your business much faster. Now let's come back to the important point. To establish brand relevance, it is necessary for you to identify your ideal client. But what are the biodata markers of your ideal client? And if you don't know these biodata markers, you really do not know your ideal client. One of the first things that you want to consider when you're attempting to identify your ideal client is to do what we call the demographic classification. The demographic classification means that you are taking the time to truly identify with your ideal client based on their demographic classification. Second, you want to be certain that you understand your ideal client urgent need and immediate need. You want to invest the time, talent, and resources to really understand their pain point. Third, you must invest time to ensure that the market is viable. And why am I saying this? Because the possibility exists that you take the time to identify identify the ideal client based on their demographic classification. You take the time to understand the ideal client based on their pain point, but guess what? You didn't take the time to really predetermine if that market is viable, which means that you're going to be innovating products and services. You're going to be positioning products and services only to recognize that the market is not viable. So all of these things are important concepts that you want to ensure that you have this body of knowledge when it comes to identifying your ideal client. The fourth is that you want to invest the time, talent, and resources to ensure that you have access to the ideal client. Now, the possibility exists that you might have great products and services, but do you have access to the ideal client? There are barriers that may exist. You want to ensure that you understand those barriers. The next concept for you to consider is to be certain that the ideal client has the ability.
ability to pay. It comes back to market viability. There are so many rising stars in business. You start in business, you innovate in products and services, and you're attempting to position products and services in front of who you assume is the ideal client, only to recognize that they don't have the ability to pay. The last concept that we're going to be looking at here, and I said this earlier, the ability to pay does not mean or translate into the willingness of the ideal client to pay. The willingness of the ideal client to pay boils down to your understanding of the ideal client based on psychographic. This disunderstanding that tells you that as you innovate products and services, that as you position your minimum or most viable offer in front of the ideal client, they reach all of these biodata markers and you are leveraging this biodata markers, this data to help you to make informed and highly educated decision that is going to position you to win in the hearts, minds, and souls of the ideal client. It's your knowledge of this and your ability to apply this body of knowledge that's going to position you to be known, to be liked, and to be trusted because you have taken the time to truly understand the ideal client. You have taken the time to truly understand their pain point. You have taken the time to innovate products and services that satisfy, reaches their expectations, and goes beyond their expectations. And you've done this consistently over a long period of time. They know you, they like you, they trust you. Now, if you like what you're hearing here, I want to encourage you to sign up for our program. When you learn this body of knowledge, apply this body of knowledge to business, you will see a massive transformation begins to take place in your business. I'm so excited to introduce another important concept, which we call the client conversion ladder. And that's how to stress test the ideal client to ensure that they are truly your ideal client. Next step that you could be focusing on is the client conversion ladder. Client conversion ladder will really help you to understand 11 important concepts. And once you learn, apply, and master these concepts, you will never have to worry about attracting the ideal client who are willing, able, and exciting customers. So I do encourage you to register now for this free orientation to learn more of how these programs can transform your life and the life of your business. All you need to do is to go to the description of this video, press the link, and we'll take you to that page that you need to fill out. You will be in our community. Get on board now because we'll not be free for much longer. Doing business is not easy. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's easy. I'm not going to sit here and water down what it takes to be successful in business. I'm not going to sit here and give you the easier concepts because I want to attract you in for you to pay. I'm going to help you to understand the realities of doing business. So when you're coming to us, you're coming to us mentally prepare to do some heavy lifting. They say no pain, no gain. But when you make that commitment to grow through the pain, that's the only way you grow and expand. <laughs> It's like a baby that is, is going to be walking. A baby is determined to get up his two feet and start walking. And that baby could walk and that baby could fall several times. That baby is going to rise again. Nothing is going to prevent that baby from standing on its own two feet and walk. And then it's going to start to run. And then it's going to start to, you know, become champion in runners. Do you have this mindset? That baby is applying itself in the right context. Are you applying yourself in the right context to grow and scale your business? The second concept of application so now do you have some idea as to what knowledge is? Knowledge is to understand the first concept, demographic classification. But what does it mean to really have this body of knowledge and apply it? Applying this body, this body of knowledge means that you're already taking the time to know who is the ideal client and possibly you're getting out there and you're building relationship with them. So you say, oh, I want to, my ideal client is the middle class, is the upper class, but are you building relationship with them? So in this context, again, application means means establishing relationship with the ideal client and you start you begin to establish that relationships by doing the research perhaps you can have a research team that is really going to the ground and uh, they're interfacing with them so you're collecting data you have data on their names their addresses their telephone numbers their pain points their income status you, you you're collecting information and you're building out that relationship with them and the ultimate play in client conversion is relationship. That's one of the ultimate plays. And if you don't know to how to play this game of building healthy, productive relationship with the critical stakeholders, you have failed before you say, Mark, set and go. You have failed. My biggest wish is that you continue to listen to this concept, but don't only listen to get the knowledge. You have to get your mindset into application. And I know that applying could be very difficult, especially when it's an ab abstract interpretation for most. My role is to try to break it down here. So 
as you build a relationship with the ideal client, you have a better understanding of their specific needs. You have a better understanding of where and how to access them. Because access can mean many things also. It may not be physically accessing the, your ideal client, but you have mass media access. You have you know social media access. You have the metaverse access. You have independent communication channel access. You have all of this available to you, but are you leveraging all of this in the right way to ensure that you're optimizing the ultimate play to build relationship with the ideal client application it's not enough to have this knowledge and not know how to apply it because it is the ability to apply this body of knowledge is what's going to set you up for success and if this body of knowledge is not apply you're going to set yourself up for failure for many of you you have failed before you said mark said go because you're walking encyclopedia you have the knowledge base but the application base you you don't have it so when we talk of application in the context of the ultimate plain client conversion, this is an essential body of knowledge that you need to have. It's not enough to identify the demographic classification. It's equally important to start building healthy, productive relationship with that sector. It's a sector that you want to innovate products and services for. It's a sector that you want to serve. It's a sector that you want to make massive amount of money. So does it make a lot of sense to really get out there and start building healthy, productive relationship with the sector? It requires certain skill sets to do this to. And I know many of you, you may not have the skill sets to, to do this, but that's why we have a team. And that's why we emphasize to build an organization, you need to understand the organization at the strategic level, the tactical level, at the operational level. And you need to have your critical take stakeholders, your, your critical thinkers, well positioned at the strategic, tactical, and operational level. If not, you're going to have a sole trader or what they call a sole entrepreneur who is functioning at all three levels. And that's literally really shooting yourself 10 times in the legs so you can't walk you're worse than that baby you know that is trying to get up and try to to to, to run to walk around and run around you have disabled yourself because you are micromanaging you're doing every single thing strategic tactical and operational you are you're going to fail before you say mark set and go you may start as a sole trader a sole entrepreneur but what you need to do is to focus your attention on cash flow optimization and from the point you start to cash flow optimize you want to attract the right talents within the organization to move the vision forward. Now, if you have confidence in your brand enough, the next thing that you need to really focus on is how are you going to attract capital to the business. And there are multiple ways in which you can do this. You can bring in a private equity partner. That's part of what we do. You can perhaps access, access credit at 0% APR. You can access debt instruments. There are multiple financial instruments that is available to you at the startup phase that can position you to optimize the growth of your business. When you have the strategic thinkers and you're able to apply this body of knowledge, the way in which I'm saying it to you, you're going to position yourself to win. When you're playing the game at the ultimate play level, all right, at the ultimate play level, it's no longer about the knowledge, it's about the application. It's about the application. So let's move on here a little bit. So we are looking at how do you create brand relevance? and how do you see creating brand relevance in the context of the application? It's one thing to have the knowledge of how to create brand relevance and it's quite another to apply this body of knowledge to achieve a desired end result. The first thing that I spoke about early on explained the two most important things that you need to understand about brand relevance. You identify who you want to serve based on their biodata markers. You identify their specific needs. As you build relationships, you are now able able to have a more clinical interpretation of who you're serving and what are their specific needs. And the third thing, which is so important to brand relevance, is to innovate products and services in alignment with the specific needs of the ideal client. The important questions that you want to be asking yourself, are you in the position of strength to innovate products and services for the ideal client? Let's take real estate. Real estate is a high capital investment portfolio, and you might be doing research Search, you might be collecting data and information about a group of travelers that are coming to your destination. But a group of travelers 
they have specific needs. Perhaps it might be a high-end group of travelers. So in terms of accommodation, they want the best in accommodation. They want security and safety. So you want to ask yourself, can you rise to this occasion to provide safety and security? Can you rise to the occasion to perhaps not only satisfy their expectations, but supersede their expectation in the provision of products and services? It is your ability to apply yourself in this way that is going to set you up for success. And that concept can be applied across multiple platforms. It may not be real estate. It may be a different consumer base. But what is important here is you ask yourself, am I able to reach their expectations, supersede their expectations, and win in business and cash flow optimize? It might be that you're dealing with a group of business leaders, but the group of business leaders, they need access to capital. So you have built out, first of all, an ecosystem that allows you to understand the demographic demographics that you are targeted. And because you have built relationship with this demographic, you now understand their specific needs. Now that you understand their specific needs, you're now saying to yourself, okay, the market is, is big, it's viable, and they have an urgency and immediacy and access to capital. They have the ability to pay. They have the willingness to pay. I can supply those needs and those wants and those expectations. I can. And this is how you go through that process of building a brand that is relevant. And here's where we talk about brand relevance. And this is how you go about building a brand that is relevant to the ideal client. But we have so many stars in business today that you're starting the business and you're putting the cart before the horse. You don't have the data. You don't have the information that is going to help you to make informed and highly educated decisions. And when the operation fails, because you don't have the information, because you are not applying yourself the way you ought to be applying yourself, you blame everyone else but yourself. Again, I'm going to say this, applying yourself is hard work. And I'm saying this because I'm experiencing, you know, a lot of students who are in the classroom and they believe that, hey, I have the knowledge and the knowledge is enough. But you have to believe in yourself enough to rise to the occasion to apply the body of knowledge. And if you don't want to apply the body of knowledge, you at least need to ensure that you're building out your strategic, tactical and operational leadership team that can help you in the application of that body of knowledge. The application of the body of knowledge is king. The knowledge may be the queen, but if the queen want to procreate, if the queen want to have offsprings, you need the queen. You need the king, all right? And the king is the application. The king got to go to work. The king got to get mellow. The king got to do what the king got to do. You got to go out. You got to mix and mingle. <laughs> you got to communicate. you got to build healthy, productive relationship that represents the interests of the collective. I'm laughing, but <laughs> this is serious business, you know. So I trust that you would have enjoyed uh, today's episode, the, the ultimate plain client conversion, knowledge versus application, and what knowledge and application has to do with the, uh, you know, the ultimate plain client conversion. I continue to say this. My role here is not to give you the information. Yeah, you're going to get the information, but that's not my ultimate plan. My ultimate place to provide you with the information, but you have to apply this body of knowledge. And I want to say this, I'm, I'm conscious of the fact that applying this body of knowledge is not as easy as one, two, three. I know it has a lot to do with mindset. I know it has to do a lot with your sense of self, your sense of purpose and your sense of direction. And I know that, you know, people never grow beyond their sense of self. I'm fully aware of this. Your sense of self is what's holding you, uh, keeping you right where you are. Our role is to ensure that we can help you to get the best mentorship, the best coaching, the best sponsors, because we, we give you the financial support that you need to grow. And to ensure that you are part of a community of people that can truly point you in the right direction, that can really support you. At your lowest moment, they can inspire and empower you. And at the highest moment, they can push you even higher. I'm fully aware that there are so much of factors that are preventing you from coming into your greatness. And because we are conscious of this, we have built at our ecosystem to make you feel at home, to make you feel encouraged, to make you feel in power, and to position you to come into your greatness. That's my ultimate play. Call me a humanitarian, I accept it. But our role is to ensure that you have the information <clears throat> and you're truly able to experience transformation <laughs> in your business and in your life. I would keep saying, we believe in you, but what's important is you believe in yourself. I know you may not be able to break all the barriers right away, but come to us with that pebble of 
of believe and we're going to show you how to use that pebble to create massive ripple effects have some faith in yourself my name is gary thompson and i must say it has been such a pleasure uh, being with you today and uh, keep following keep subscribing and share this content reach out to us and be so happy to engage with you come and be part of our community. We have multiple communities that we are building out. We have the ultimate playing client conversion. We meet uh, once a week. We are now rolling out marketing blueprint that is really going to help you to understand blueprints, which is standard operating procedures, SOPs <clears throat> across various sectors. And we're doing all of this because we want to provide you with a body of knowledge that can truly transform the way you think and the way you go about doing business and can position you for greatness. Be blessed. And see you in the next broadcast. 10X Branding and Marketing LLC, powering the next generation of unicorns. At 10X BNM LLC, we specialize in market research, brand innovation, market integration, and client conversion optimization. Our team of experts is dedicated to providing the strategic insights and innovative solutions needed to accelerate growth and unlock your company's full potential. Whether you're a startup looking to attract investors and your ideal clients, or an established business ready for market expansion, we're here to guide you every step of the way. Let 10X Branding and Marketing LLC fuel your journey to exceptional business success. Contact us now for a free consultation on how we can position your business to become a unicorn.